So for those of you who've made it this far in the course, you've reached the midterm. And the purpose of this video is to make sure you and everybody else in the class has everything, everything they need to be successful on the midterm. So within the midterm, we're going to be utilizing Adobe Cooler. We're also going to be downloading um, a localhost fo folder or a root folder uh, that will have the content within it that we're going to work within. We're going to also have um, raw content within a Microsoft Word file. We're going to have a mock-up of what you're going to be uh, visually designing, and we're also going to be doing all of that within a sample file. We're also going to, like I said, we're going to be adding in raw content from Microsoft Word, so we're going to be copying it from Microsoft Word, and we're going to paste it into our HTML document, which is similar to how a lot of clients that you work with in the future will be, because they, you know, use something that's comfortable with them to maybe communicate to you how they might want their page, their HTML page to look, and they often do that in Microsoft Word. And then we're going to talk about how ways you can visually design the content. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it the traditional way. You can try to, you know, uh, do something fun with it, but I do want you to utilize Adobe Cooler for those colors. And then finally, we're going to talk briefly about how to validate the page. Um, we haven't really covered validation um, yet in the course, but I'd like you to give it a give it a try. And then I'd also like to talk about how to save and then zip the file to send to me and then how to attach the assignment. So let's take a look at our midterm from our activities page. So the problem, your client, Webster University, is pursuing uh, you to have their history of Webster University page redesigned to increase usability and functionality. All of your text, images, and a sample HTML page with table formatting are provided with you for you within the midterm localhost folder. As designer for this project, you will need to utilize all of these files to redesign the page. So where is this localhost folder? So you'll notice that you scroll down here to, oh, I also tell you up here uh, that I would like you to get your color styles from uh, Adobe Cooler. We could just go ahead and click on that link and I can show you what it looks like. So this is just an Adobe Cooler swatch that I have set up uh, for you to utilize. And don't forget to get the hex decimal code. You just come over here and you click on uh, the make changes. And then down here you get the hex decimal code. So if you want to use this blue or this blue or this blue or this yellow or this or this white, uh, you get these hex decimals from right down here. So then here's the instructions. So number one, we need to download our midterm localhost zip and save it to your desktop. Or I save mine. To, mine always goes to my downloads folder first. So I'm going to save it there, and then I need to go to my downloads folder. And I'm just going to move this over to my desktop. So now I have it here on my desktop. And now what I need to do is I need to unzip this folder. So I'm just going to right click, open with. I use WinZip, but don't forget WinRAR is a, a free one that you can perhaps use. So I'm just going to use WinZip. And then I'm going to come up here to extract. These are all the files that are within it. And I'm just going to hit extract. And I want it to extract to the desktop. So I'm just going to hit extract. Let's take a look at let's see what's inside this folder. So inside this folder, you'll notice there are five different images. There's a history of Webster University content page. That's, uh, that's just the raw content. We also have our history of Webster University mock-up. So this is kind of what I would suggest having your page look like. And then we also have our sample page, which you're going to start building this content within. Let's take a look at the mock-up. So this is essentially what we're going to have when, you, when you're done. Uh, you're going to add some different visual styles, but essentially this is kind of what we're going for. You're going to have this introductory paragraph. You're going to have these bullets here, and then we're going to talk about the early history. You're going to have an image floated over to the right. For functionality, we're going to have a two-top link that's going to jump the users. When they click on that, it's going to jump them up here to the top of the page. Then we're going to have another section with an image and a two-top link, another section, an image, jump them back up to the page, and so on. So that's what the page will look like, and then eventually you'll notice that these are going to be links that are going to jump the users to the bottom of those pages. So if someone clicks on early history, then early history is going to be what was seen at the top of the page for these um, internal links. They're going to click on decades of change, 
and then decades of change is going to be up here at the top of the page. Same thing with education and working adults. So now it's up to you. You can get the raw content here from this file or you can use it from here within this file. All I've done here with this raw content is I've tried to give cue you on how maybe you might want to do some things like History of Webster University, this is a heading one and I would suggest that it would be centered. This is another, this is a paragraph and it would essentially start the section. We have an unordered list here but as opposed to an ordered list. We're going to have uh, our old Webster over here image floated to, to the right perhaps. We're going to have a target link that would jump the users to the top of the page. So, and then here is um, the raw content that you could capture and put into your template. And this tells you this is the second paragraph, or this is where it would start. And then we have the two top link that would jump you to the top of the page. And then you'd also have a page break that would clear right so that you make sure that when it wraps, that it's not wrapping around the image. And all of this type of stuff is covered in your book from up to this point. So let's take a, take a look at the sample page. We're going to open it up in Notepad++. So I'm going to right click, edit with Notepad++. And notice I have it all set up for you here. Um, you're going to definitely, you know, you're going to put the title in there. But all the body content is going to go here between this table data and table row. So all of your body content for the whole page would go within here. So for example, you can come here to this raw page. Uh, History of Webster University, you would copy that, go here to the Notepad++, History of Webster University is now pasted in, and you're going to give it an H1 tag. Give yourself some space to work. Go back into your raw content. Copy this paragraph, go back into Notepad++, start your paragraph, paste in your paragraph, close your paragraph. I'm not going to give too much more away because I would want you to, I'm trying to test you to make you sure you know how to do um, unordered lists and then knowing how to create these heading twos and inserting the images and so on. Let's take a back look, let's take a second look at our instructions again. So now this is where we're at. So change the title. Um, notice that the sample HTML page has some table formatting built into it. This will allow the content to be presented into the page centered within an 800 pixel one column table similar to the formatting found on Webster.edu. So let's take a look at our, let me make sure that I, did I save it, hang on. So I'm gonna save this, hold down control, press S. And within here, I'm going to open this up in the browser. So now this is what I have so far. Um, I have my H1, and then I have this is centered in this, this. The content so far is centered within this one column table here. So now let's go back and take a look at our instructions. So begin the body section, which we already did. Add the level one heading, which we already did. Add the text for the first paragraph. Add an unordered list. We didn't do that. Add the five section of content. So this is just my, again, this is my suggestion on the order of how you want to build out everything. Again, this is what the mock-up looks like. So this is what you want to get your page to look at, look like. And then you'd go back in and you'd add um, additional visual styles. Um, so I tell you specifically about all of those things that you need to add. For functionality, you need to add 30 breaks at the bottom of the page of functionality. That's so that when users click on the different um, links up here at the top, it'll bounce them down. For example, it'll bounce them and put this one at the top of the page. If you don't put those line breaks, then it might bounce it, and, th and this would be kind of in the middle of the page. So for functionality, you go ahead and put those line breaks down there at the bottom. There are better ways to do that, but currently at this point in the course, that's the way that it should be done. And then add some visual styles to the page by adding an embedded style sheet at the, at the head of the page. Suggested styles to include are, you know, changing your fonts, changing si uh, sizes of your headings, paragraphs, links, etc. perhaps. Background color, again that would be pulled from Adobe Cooler. Um, background color for the, uh, this would be the background color for the body. And then the background color for the table. So that would be, again, the color for this cell as opposed to the color for outside the table. 
and then perhaps a table border. So that would be then giving this border a color, this border down here, a specific color. And then maybe changing the colors of the level one and two headings. So now that you got all of that done, um, then what you're going to do is you're going to go to validator.w3.org. So you can go ahead and click on this link. And I'm going to show you how you would just validate the page. So the best way to do that is to validate by file upload. So you go to file, upload. You're going to hit browse. Again, we're going to learn more about validation in the coming weeks. So hit browse and then tell your computer where that file is. So right now I just have it sampled, but your file is going to be called History of Webster University HTML. And hit open and hit check. And what you're looking for is you're looking for this green bar that says this document was successfully checked and is XHTML transitional, yada yada. Sometimes what might happen is you're going to get here and it's, this will be red and it'll say that you'll have so many errors. And then you'll scroll down to the bottom and it'll tell you what errors that you have. For example, let's put in an error in, my, in our page. So let's say I wanted to, let's say for example, I took out one table row, hit save. And then I'm going to come over to the validator, backup. Browse, sample, open, check. Now I'm going to hit check, and it gives me one error. So this is just an example of what it's going to look like. And it's going to scroll to the bottom, and it's going to tell you the specific line and the column where the error is occurring. So document type does not allow the TD element. So I need to open up my file again and add that back in. Now again, this just kind of gives you a ballpark of where the error might occur. So this is just an extra way for you to kind of go in and it'll tell you within your code where there might be an error. So as long as you're keeping your code organized and you're making a lot of the problems I see students have at the midterm is not closing an element or not closing it properly. Um, so just make sure that you do so. Um, check, make sure your links you know are all working and stuff like that um, so once it's once you fix it so I fixed it so now I can back up the check so now it passes so then what I suggest doing is you can maybe take a screen capture or you can just print the page as a PDF so you just go to file print I have PDF as one of my printers file Adobe PDF hit OK yeah, then ask me where I want to, to save it. You can save it in your desktop, in your folder, and hit save. And then it just shows me. So this is the file that I would get from you. This is this document passed. And if you have trouble with getting it printed, just make sure you let me know that it passed, and I can always go in and check with the validator to make sure it did pass. So we've done the validation. And then make sure that all the necessary files within your midterm localhost folder, uh, within your last, it, have, it has your last name, and then you're going to zip it to me. So save this. Go ahead and close this. So now what I want to do is change the file name of this folder, so I could add my last name. You would add your last name. You could also add co-app. So now I have this folder with the last name. Oh, one thing I did forgot to show you that we didn't do earlier is that this should be labeled Webster History. So now I have everything that I need. I have my validation page. I have all of my images. You've made your page now. And now you want to send it to me for grading. You've added your last name here. And now you're just going to right click, send to, compress zip. So now make sure you don't. I've had people say, accidentally send me the original. I don't need that. I need yours. So you would actually attach this to the assignment uh, for your midterm. And then I'm going to take get everybody's and I'm going to unzip them all and I'm going to check everybody's code. And I assume we'll all be okay and we'll all do really great on the term project. So. Again, just go through and make sure you have everything. 
and let the class or me know if you have any questions. Good luck.